It's a great week for comet spotting. One of them was discovered by our next guest. He's an astronomer at the University of Arizona. We got to bring in Carson. He's joining us live this morning to tell us uh, all about it. First, we got to talk about your discovery. And uh, apparently it's a great week to see comets in the sky. Is that right? It, it is. There's there's two of them that have been up and uh, they're faintly but visible to the naked eye this week. And what's the best? Uh, where do you even find it? Where, where should folks look? So for the comet we discovered, Comet Lemon, uh, the best way to hunt for it, and you're going to A, need to be in a really dark location. B, you might want to have some binoculars uh, to help you out. But if you look kind of towards the Big Dipper up in the sky and follow the handle, the curve of the handle down, it should point you roughly in the direction of where the comet is. So is this just a better time of year, a certain week? What is it that makes this so special to, to see them? So this, this one's special because of how close it's coming. Uh, so it's, it's fairly close to Earth for a comet uh, and fairly bright. So that's why it's a great time to get outside and view it. And so you made a discovery as well, is that right? Yeah, uh, so I work with the Catalina Sky Survey. We're a NASA-funded project to look for near-Earth asteroids. And uh, while I was at the telescope earlier this year in January, uh, surveying, looking for new objects, I happened to find uh, a new object up in the sky. I reported it as soon as I saw it. And uh, it turned out it, it wasn't a near-Earth object. It was actually a comet. It was hard to tell at the time, but uh, further observations started to see a, a tail and a coma like you would for a comet. And then it was, uh, once this was realized, it was designated uh, 2025 A6 Lemon. Lemon, Comet Lemon? <laughs> That's right. It's, it's named after the, the telescope that it was discovered at, because unfortunately, I didn't identify it as a comet at the time of discovery. Otherwise, it would be a Comet Folds. So, I, you know, we just had video of the comet there that was up. And so we're looking at just at all of this space, really. But you noticed something different. How did you even spot that? Because the picture that we're looking at right now, it's very small. There's a lot of other stuff in space. How do you even know that right there, that dot? That's different. <laughs> so what, what you're not seeing is we actually take four images of the exact same spot in the sky and all those other dots are stars so they stay fixed but that dot actually moved a little bit and we have tons and tons of software that goes through and tries to pick those out but the final determination is is made by a person whoever is running the telescope that night oh that's fascinating and i imagine there's a lot of places in arizona that are that are good to go out there and look because we have a lot of dark sky communities as well Absolutely, and you're going to need a dark sky if you want to see this comet naked eye. What, what would you say to folks who do want to get out there and, and they want to see the comets and they want to just explore space from Earth, <laughs> you know, and, and just see what's out there because it is so fascinating. I, I would say, you know, you're, you're lucky to, to live in a place with access to so many dark skies, but just head out there, give your eyes you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes to adapt, to get really dark adapted so you can see the, the dimmest objects. And then if you can, take a, a pair of bird watching binoculars out as well and just slowly scan the sky. And you'll be amazed how much more you can see uh, just with that. I never thought binoculars. I thought that you'd have to have a telescope. You, you really don't. Uh, you know, it's getting towards the wintertime. Orion constellation is going to be coming up. And just below Orion's belt is a beautiful nebula that you can see. You can almost see it naked eye. But if you just have a simple pair of even kids binoculars and scan down there, you'll see that, oh, that's not a star. That's, that's a nebula. That's a big fuzzy patch. <laughs> wow. That's good stuff. Well, Carson, thank you so much. Fascinating out there. Now we know this is a good week to get out there. Uh, look to the sky and who knew binoculars. That's that's all you need <laughs> to get started. All right. Thanks, Absolutely. Carson. Enjoy the night sky. Yes. From the University of Arizona. Thanks, Carson. We appreciate it.